let's look at how we might be able to use this as a tool for our studies. So think of it maybe as having a discussion with a lecturer or someone who can explain stuff to you without actually having to have the lecturer. So maybe it could make my job obsolete too. <laughs> Let's take a look. So one of the things that students struggle with um, a lot is financial management related stuff, especially in, in higher levels. Um, so, so let's let's take something. Now, I'm not really interested in the topic itself. I just want to show you, you know, show what we can do. So, let's let's see if we can or how we could possibly use this as as a study tool for for ourselves. So, let's say, um, what is the formula for IRR, internal rate of return? <clears throat> Formula for IRR is the rate at which net present value of a series of cash flows is equal to zero. Mathematically, it's a solution of the following equation. Uh, how do you calculate on an HP financial calculator? Let's see if it could help us with our actual, like our financial calculators. To calculate on HP, use the RR function. Steps are as follows. So all I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out, or I'm just trying to give us an example, or get you thinking about how you can use this to help you with your studying. Um, how, um, how to calculate using Excel. So you can see, you know, it's it's a chat, so it's following on the same conversation um, of, of RR. And here's how you would do it in, in Excel, set up a column. So I think this is a very valuable tool, you know, if, if you're working with stuff that you're not really sure of, um, and obviously that, that you're studying. You know, this is a tool to help you in those cases where you would be sitting studying the stuff and going, oh, I would love to have a lecturer at my shoulder, like, why am I doing this? Or how would I do this? Or how do I, what if that's wrong? Or what, what if that's not picking, you, picking it up or whatever? Um, let's say, what does RR actually mean? So this is now, like, let's get more to, you know, what what is it really? Like, we know how to calculate it. We can see the number, but can you can you actually explain it? So it gives us probably more of a definition. Financial metric measures the rate at which an investment is expected to generate a return relative to its cost. Represents the rate at which the net present value is equal to zero. In other words, discount rate. Fine. Often used to compare different investment opportunities to evaluate the potential profitability. The higher the RRR, the more profitable the investment is expected to be. Uh, okay, um, give an example. Here's an example of how it can be calculated. Suppose an investor invests 100,000 that is expected to generate cash flows of 30,000 at the end of year one, 40,000 at the end of year two, 50,000 at the end of year three, 60,000 at the end of year four. So it's a little example. To calculate this, we need to determine the discount rate that makes the present value of these cash flows equal to the initial investment using an RR. So in this example, an RR of 19.9 .9 is considered a good return on investment as it's higher than the cost of capital and indicates that the investment is expected to generate a positive return. An RR of 19% is also useful. Okay, so it gives us quite a lot of information. Now, obviously, we can go further into this and go, uh, so maybe, for example, we go, well, how would we calculate, or how do you know? Because uh, it says there that um, the 19.9 .9 is considered good because it's higher than the cost of capital. So how do you know that it's higher than the cost of capital? So these are questions I haven't asked. So I'm just thinking of if I was... If I was doing this myself, I would be like, well, where is the cost of capital and how do you know that? So how do you know that it's higher than the cost of capital? Like, what are you looking at? 
To determine whether the RR of an investment is higher than the cost of capital, you need to compare the RR to the cost of the funds you use to finance the investment. The cost of the capital is the minimum rate of return that an investor expects to receive from an investment considering the risk involved. If the RR is higher than the cost of capital, it means investment is... Okay. So you could then go down another rabbit hole and go, okay, can you tell me how to calculate the cost of capital? You need to compare RR to the cost of funds used to finance the investment. Um, so in other words, if you're taking the money out the bank and the bank is charging you a 5% interest rate, then that's the cost of funds. Fine, so you could go you could go further into that and you could probably give, I mean, you could give it an actual example and go, here it is, like do the calculation. Um, explain um, simply to a layperson with no accounting background. Let's see if it can explain with, because it's using quite a lot of higher, sort of a higher level of terminology. So let's see if we could help, if we're struggling with the topic or we're struggling with the concept, like could we dial it back and take out some of the, the, the higher levels of terminology to make it more simple? Okay, so it's giving us a really basic, it's giving us an analogy. Think of it as a grade for the investment. So with a higher grade, you get a better investment. Imagine you have $100, you're considering investing in a company that promises to pay you back 120 a year. So you can see the levels of simplification, like it's simplifying things a little bit. It's leaving out a lot of the terminology, the financial metrics stuff. You know, it was talking about cost of capital and um, here it's, you know, it's really trying to simplify. It's used to compare different investment options and help you decide which is the better choice. If you have two investment options, you would choose the one with higher RRR, IRR, as it means you can expect a better return on your investment. This is a really great tool for your studying. When you're sitting with topics that you're, you know, you've, you've got the textbook, but you kind of wish you could have a conversation with somebody and go, okay, but what does that actually mean? Um, how would I use that? Um, you know, would I use this calculation if I was considering buying a um, a company as opposed to investing in a financial instrument, for example? Stupid. Just occurs to me. Like, would this be a valuation tool? Like, you know, would I use would I use this? What type of investment are we talking about? Keeping in mind, I'm not a financial management expert and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to, <laughs> trying to show you how we could use these tools uh, for your studying. Yes, it can also be used to evaluate the potential profitability of acquiring a company. In this case, the RR would be used to determine the rate at which the future cash flows from the acquired company are expected to generate a return relative to the investment. For example, if you're considering, I love the fact that it gives you examples. Um, in this sense, our R can be a useful tool for business owners and financial analysts to invest. So let's say, when would you not use RR to evaluate an investment? Oh. <laughs> I think I have reached... <laughs> I have clearly reached my limit. Alrighty, so you're gonna need to spend you're gonna need to spread your studying out a little bit over over one hour. So I'll come back in uh, I'll come back in twenty minutes and carry on. But I, th I think it's I think it served the point. So you know what what a lot of what a lot of my students struggle with at higher levels in in financial management, especially and and for you know subjects where it's very tool based, is that you're not actually really sure of what it is. So if you're in earlier levels of your studying. And you're going to be focusing more on the formula. Like, what is the formula for RR? What is the formula for NPV? What is the formula for variable costing? Whatever the case is, you're going to be focusing on the formulae. What you're missing is, why do we use this thing? Like, what are we actually using it for? And I think this could be very valuable to give you a picture because, you know, you can look at this and go, well, anyone could find out how to calculate it. You know, like there's a formula in Excel. You know, you can, you can just create a spreadsheet. It tells you exactly how to calculate it. But the, what do you do with the information? Like, what does it actually mean? So a large part of the problem that I have for financial management, my students at higher levels, they struggle with the fact that when they first started learning financial management, they were learning how the formulae worked. 
this is what the cash flow is, this is where to get it. This is what the, t the T is, this is where to get it. This is what the N is, this is where to get it. This is what the percentage is, this is where to get it. And so they're very used to plugging and playing the formula where the case study is like, he has a whole bunch of numbers, now do the formula. And then you get to higher levels and you go, okay, you know, what calculation would you use? You know, they would like, how would you evaluate the investment? And it's as simple as that. And now you would have to go, oh, I would use IRR to do this. You know, so it's not about knowing the formula. It's about knowing what IRR does so that I know when my client comes to me and says, I have a problem, I know where, where I can use that problem. And I think this would be very valuable for you because it can help give you an idea of like, what do I use it for? And that's why I quite like this question, what does this topic actually mean? Like, so when I'm looking at stuff and I don't understand at the moment, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using this for stuff that I'm busy studying and working on because I quite like the ability to ask, like, what does that actually mean? Um, break it down, forget the terminology, forget the definitions, forget the formulae. What does it mean in my life? What would I use it for? Give an, give an example until I can put a picture to it and go, oh, so if a client comes to me and asks for the following types of things, this is what I would use. This is where I would use it. And then the last question that I wouldn't answer is, <laughs> is like, when would you not use it? So I think this would be very valuable for you to get a much better picture of how or what these tools are designed to do. Um, and I struggled with that with financial management because the textbooks never really told me that. The textbooks generally started with, you know, this is what the formula is. Uh, you know, this is what it is and this is what the formula is. And I could never really correspond that with like, why are we doing this? Like, why? I didn't understand that that was missing, but I didn't, I didn't know what it was for. So when I got to the questions where it was like, okay, um, you know, how would you cost this thing? I had to decide which costing methodology to use and I couldn't. Because I didn't know why there were different ones. I just knew that there were a bunch of different ones. But I didn't know under what circumstances one would be more appropriate than the other. So I was expecting that they would say, do the variable costing. Okay, I can do that. I, can, you know, I know what the formula is. I can do that. But if they're just going, like, which would be the best costing methodology to use and why, and then do the calculation, I'm like, I don't know. I didn't know that. So... If you're at earlier levels of your studying, I really warn you, and this is a really easy, free way to help you understand, yes, but what is the tool for? I promise you this is going to help you if you don't understand what the tool is for. Like, why am I using this? What does it actually mean? You're going to come unstuck towards the end of third year, um, and definitely you're going to come unstuck in, in postgrad. If any of you know my, my, my horror stories and my... My sad, my sad financial management <laughs> saga, you'll understand, you know, that I, I have experience with this. So this is a really great tool. I think, you know, stop worrying about whether or not it's going to make you obsolete. Let it help you with, you know, with, with your studying and with your work. You know, I have a lot of people who are starting articles and starting their internships and stuff. And, and there's a lot of stuff that you need to know. And there's a lot of stuff you're like, I really want to ask someone, but I don't want to be the one asking questions all the time. Well, maybe you could do this. You know, on an Ephraim order, it's how would I do this? It could just give you a little bit of an indication or, you know, your partner said something and he's mentioned some fancy reference and you just wrote down the reference, but you have no idea what he's trying to say or where he's getting this from. And you're like, am I supposed to know that? You know, go and look for it. I think it's fantastic. You know, let everyone else be worried about whether or not it's going to make them obsolete. For you, it can help you with your studying. It's like having a little lecture in your pocket. So do I need to worry that it's going to make me obsolete? I don't know, I guess I'm going to have to up my game as well. 